Welcome to another Tackle Obesity Show, featuring Coach Richard Walker, our host, members of the NFL alumni, lifestyle weight loss experts, and key social media influencers that are making a difference. Now, Coach Richard Walker. Bringing in is Coach Walker. We are here on another huddle of Tackle Obesity. I want to thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I have a very special guest today. I can't wait to get him on, and we're going to talk to him in about a, in a second. Uh, Coach Daniel Raz, we're so looking forward to having a conversation with him. And he's got an amazing story that he's going to share and a lot of tips. So make sure you, you chime in. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to drop them in the chat for those of you that are live. For those of you that are listening to us on one of our mini broadcasts, uh, KCAA 102.5, 106.5, the station that leaves no listener behind in Southern Cal. Uh, also, we're at WCKG in Chicago, the land of Dick Buckus and Walter Payton, as well as 1580, the fanatic in Phoenix. So wherever you are listening, as well as our podcast platforms, all the podcast platforms, if you tune in, feel free to drop us a message. If you have questions, we will get answers for you. That's what this is all about. So visit us at tackleobesity.com. That's the locker room, tackleobesity.com. We'll get all your, your questions answered for you. We'll connect you to resources. We're all teammates in this battle against obesity, and we're just happy to, to be able to be a part of the tribe. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. My next guest is a great, great man to have. And it's, this is the last time I'm going to use the G word. As I mentioned uh, to you, we don't have guests. We have teammates. So moving forward, uh, we will be referring to him as our teammate. Uh, and it is my man, Daniel Raz. Uh, we're going to bring him up right now. Daniel, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. I'm excited to be here. Great. And you're joining us from South America. Yep. I moved to Paraguay three weeks ago because it's cold in Canada. So I'm going to be here until June, then go back. This is a man that's, that's well-traveled and knows how to get around. Um, but more importantly, he knows his way to get around this obesity crisis. And I had the pleasure of running into his content on Twitter. You know, Daniel and I have been, you know, exchanging, you know, tweets and and, and messages for quite a while. It, you know, and it's my fault, guys, you know, uh, that he should have been on this show a long time ago because his story is incredible. And I'm not going to share all of it, but I'll, I'll let him talk about it. But he was born in Israel. He moved to China with his family when he was six. And he hated Chinese food, so he only ate McDonald's until he was the age of 12. Uh, at age 12, he started playing basketball, started to improve his diet, uh, started to try new foods. Um, you know, he started to become very confident on a basketball court, but nowhere else. And then at age 17, he started working out more seriously and realized that, you know, he could take this information with him anywhere and, you know, became more more confident. So um I'll, I'll let you kind of speak on that, Daniel. Like, like what, what lit your fuse to get involved in this battle against obesity? Definitely. So, firstly, when I arrived to China in 2004, it's extremely different than what it is now because now it is extremely westernized. But like you said, there was McDonald's and hardcore Chinese food. And what many Americans don't understand is that Chinese food in China is very different than Chinese food in America. It's not Panda Express. It's not the Chinatown that you go to. It's extremely different. It's exactly what you imagine in the movies. Those dogs hanging upside down with the skin peeled. <laughs> there was all sorts of animals that I didn't even know people ate. So this was in 2004, 2005, 2006. It was not worse than at all. So much so that they've never seen a non chinese person. I was actually a child model for the first couple of years because I was so unique. I stood out so much from everyone else. So that's what China was like. And as you mentioned, other McDonald's, I did not eat anything because I was an extremely picky eater. But at the age of 12, my brother convinced me that if I wanted to get better at playing basketball, I have to eat healthier. And that was pretty much any diet except what I was doing. So because I started playing basketball, I wanted to improve, I tried new foods. And I vividly remember the first time I tried grilled cheese, I tried a banana. Anything that wasn't chicken nuggets, I remember trying it out. I was mm -hmm. that picky of an eater. So I definitely believe anyone can expand the diet drastically. 
So as you mentioned, I started getting more into nutrition. I stopped eating complete junk and I was still not in the best shape. I was playing basketball, but I wasn't like muscular and confident in my body. But I started lifting weights. I started spending more time in the gym. And I realized that I took my body with me everywhere I went. It was a much more transferable skill because unless there was a basketball in my hand, I couldn't show off that skill. But Mm -hmm. I could show off or look good everywhere I went. So the confidence translated. And yeah, that encouraged me to become a personal trainer. I went to university in Canada for exercise and nutrition to at first be a physiotherapist, but I decided I'd rather be a personal trainer, worked in a few gyms. Then I'm sure, Richard, a few people in your audience have heard in 2020, there was a lockdown thing going on. Mm -hmm. So changed my plan. And that is when I started doing online coaching. And the reason why I decided to work with people that are 300 pounds and get them to 200 pounds without going to the gym is because I don't know about your audience, but in 2020, when everything shut down, I personally was not prepared at all. I didn't have any dumbbells. I didn't have any bands. I didn't know this was going to happen. I didn't know this was going to happen for as long as it did. So all of a sudden, I could not go to the gym. However, because I had over a decade of experience, I still was able to get myself in phenomenal shape to get great results because I knew what to do. And a metaphor I like to use is Gordon Ramsay, the chef, can make Mm -hmm. a better meal with one pan than the average person can with five pans. Because Mm -hmm. it's not about how much equipment you have, it's about knowing what to do. And because I knew what to do, I was able to get great results at home. And I realized that many people that hate going to the gym, the people that often need the most help, hate going to the gym. So that is why I decided to help people who need the most help, people that are around 300 pounds, lose weight without going to the gym, because I know it's possible. Right. And uh, you specifically, Daniel, you know, you, you help so many different people, you know, and, and, and again, as I mentioned, you know, this is what, what really, you know, attracted me to your story is that you don't keep the information for yourself because it's, it's great for people to to go through a journey and overcome this and, and do things for themselves to make themselves healthier. But you make it a point to reach out to people that really need to help. So, so you're throwing a life, you're literally throwing a lifeline to people and it, extending your knowledge and your expertise and, and your information and helping people transition their lives. I mean, you have pictures of people that you've helped to transition, uh, lose over a hundred pounds. Um, but how do you, how do you start that conversation? You know, you have a lot of people, unfortunately, there are a lot of people who, who have good intentions. They, they want to lose the weight, but they don't have the drive. They don't have the motivation. They don't have the, the, the willpower. You know, uh, it's kind of like, you know, you have people that, 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 uh, to use an analogy, uh, they want to go shopping at Louis Vuitton, but they have Walmart mentality as far as what <laughs> yeah. is going. You know, so how do you get that out of someone? You know, as a coach, that's an excellent question, because as we all know, in January first, people that have neglected exercise and eating healthy for months, all of a sudden say, "I'm going to work out in the gym two hours every single day." I'll drink two gallons of water. I'll eat nothing but bananas and lettuce for the next year. That's the plan. And Mm -hmm. obviously, they don't stick with it. That is impossible. That is achieving way too high. I take the opposite approach. I say, let's start with what I call the easy wins. Things that take minimal time, minimal effort, but still move the needle in the direction you want it to. And when you see momentum, then you want to continue. Because I believe people don't lack motivation. They lack tangible results. When you Mm -hmm. see the scale go down week after week after week, when you see your clothes fit better every single week, you want to continue. And that is how I'm able to convert external motivation to internal motivation. Because watching motivational videos only lasts so long. But when you are able Mm -hmm. to develop internal motivation inside of you, then you look forward to it. And doesn't matter what happens, you are able to continue. You're able to 
overcome any obstacles that might come your way. Right, and uh, you know, I've, I've, you know, for those of you who have been following the show for a while, I've, I've ranted about this this topic so many times, and I'm glad that uh, you mentioned that because there's a difference between having a resolution and a revolution. A resolution mm-hmm. means, hey, you know, I, I have a thought, I have an idea, this is what I want to do. A revolution is a change of the entire process. It's a shift in mindset. It's a shift in focus. It's a shift in lifestyle. And in order to accomplish a goal and sustain it, because you can, you have people that lose weight all the time and they go right back because they mm-hmm. had their resolution, they accomplished their goal, and then that was it. They didn't have anything afterwards. So how do you keep someone on track? You know, you have people that you got you know, to the finish line, how do you keep them there? It's all about, as you mentioned, making a lifestyle change rather than following a particular diet. Because if you want to lose 20 pounds, you can do vegan, you can do keto, you can do intermittent fasting, you can do anything. But like you mentioned, oftentimes after 90 days, people lose 20 pounds, then they gain it all back. But if you make a lifestyle change, then you're able to lose 100 pounds and keep it off for good. And making lifestyle change is changing who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what country you put me in. I can always drive from point A to point B because I have the skills. I have a driver license. I can drive anywhere. Even though some countries might have different rules, some countries it's more chaotic to drive, I can still get it done. And that's the difference between having the skills and having a chauffeur, having a taxi drive you. Because if you have somebody drive you, if you have somebody do it for you and you don't develop the skills, then as soon as you're in a different place, you can't get the results you want. Mm-hmm. There, you you kind of touched on this, but I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask anyway, because um, there are a lot of people who, who have a, a do-it-yourself mentality. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, always think, <laughs> I always think of uh, one of my favorite shows was, was Home Improvement. And, uh, you know, he would always talk about how all these projects that he's going to do and blah, blah, blah. And, like nothing ever got done uh, because, you know, he had a mindset that, you know, I can do this. I don't need help. And that's not the case for a lot of people, for honestly, for most people, because when you think about success in a, in, a, in a small vacuum, anyone who's ever accomplished sustainable success at some level, they had someone to help them along the way. They had someone coaching them. So talk to me about the importance of having a good coach, having a coach and a support system as it pertains to this wellness journey. A hundred percent. The average boxer is arrogant and thinks, I don't need a coach. I can do it on my own. Mike Tyson says all his success is due to his coach. Same thing with Michael Jordan, Tom Brady. Name any of your favorite athletes. They would put a lot of emphasis and a lot of the success due to coaches. Coaches make all the difference because just like a driver license, could have I taught myself how to drive on my own without any help? I mean, maybe it would have definitely taken a lot longer. I would have Mm -hmm. probably crashed and got injured along the way. Same thing with fitness. Could you do it on your own? Yeah, but if you get injured, what are the consequences of that, how much more will it set you back? So you can figure out anything on your own. You don't need to go to school. You don't need to talk to anyone ever. You can grow your own food. You can do everything on your own, Mm -hmm. but you won't have nearly as much success. Your life won't be nearly as good. You won't be able to reap the rewards of the pleasures of life as if you help out other people and you pay for other people to help you out. Mm -hmm. We live in the information age, um, Mm -hmm. and it's both a blessing and a curse at the same time because there's so much information out there. And as as you mentioned, you know, you can do the research. You can do you can absolutely find information out there. Uh, Unfortunately, there is a lot of misinformation, uh, both intentionally and unintentionally. There are a lot of people out there who. Think they know the solutions and they 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 share things that are not facts based, and let's let's call it what it is. Uh, wellness is big business. It's big money. There's a lot of company or a lot of companies out there that have 
very little or no intentions of you being healthy because they don't have a they don't have a vested financial interest in your health. If you live longer, if you live healthier, if you don't eat ultra processed foods, there are companies that lose money mm -hmm. when you when you eat healthier. There are companies that when you don't go to the drive through and order that number three with the supersized fries and the supersized drink, their profit line shrinks. There are companies that when you're not sick or, or on medicine uh, or you're having to run to the doctor every other week or you're on dialysis, they they don't make money. And so unfortunately, there is a connection there between ultra processed foods, pharmacy, et cetera. And a lot of information that's out there is simply not accurate. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the things that I, I, I think of and without naming a name, but you go into the grocery store and you guys know where I'm going with this. You walk down the cereal aisle and you'll see cereals that are part of a healthy, balanced diet. Uh, they're heart healthy. They're they're mm. they're packed with vitamin C. And, you know, we had uh, Dr. Holly Lofton on here, who's our, our chief medical advisor. And the analogy she gave stuck to me so hard uh, because she said, while, yes, there is vitamin C or whatever protein that they claim. The same same thing is now the same thing is true as if you have a pool and you drop a medicine dropper of vitamin D in that pool. Yes, there's vitamin D in that pool, but how much? Yeah. So how do you help people to decipher fact from fiction, fact from fact? Right. So uh, quickly, I want to touch on a point that you made that whenever you want to know who to trust and what to spend your money on. Ask how do they make the most money? How do they profit the most? Because when you buy a weight loss pill or some sort of pharmacy medication, they make the most money by you continue being on the, the pill and getting more of it. Even if you look at, I used to be an in-person personal trainer. How, how do most gyms make money? Most gyms make money by you signing up and you're not going to the gym mm -hmm. because they count on the fact that 80 to 9 percent of the people that sign up don't go more than once a month. That's what they hope for. That is the business model. That's how they survive. That's how they thrive. And if you look at not just me, if you look at any fitness coach that's public that has a face that's not just a brand but is a real person, they make the most money by having the most testimonials. So you getting best results is they have more vested interest because that's how they make the more more money, most money. Mm -hmm. Just like big pharma, I also want to profit the most. However, how they profit the most is you being in worship. How I profit the most happens to me you being in the best shape because I want more referrals, more testimonials. So just wanted to touch on that. But to answer your previous question about how I get people to do this is look at it from a more sustainable approach. The goal isn't to look good for an Instagram picture in 90 days. The point is to sustainably lose the weight and keep it off for the next decade. And you do that by following something that you can do over the next decade. If you can't stick with a diet for a decade, if, there's no point in doing it for a day. So mm -hmm. I believe if a diet has a name, it's probably not sustainable. Keto, vegan, intermittent fasting, you can name it. Those work great for some people for a short period of time, but for most people, you can sustain it over the long term. Absolutely. Uh, as a card-carrying water hater, <laughs> I, I say I have no shame in saying that. I, I was, I'm one of those people that just I have I struggle to just drink water. Mm -hmm. It was something that I really had to overcome in order to 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 start you know the the trend towards my wellness goal. Uh, it was a huge part of me, you know, losing 120 pounds. I continue to to have that battle. And I think a lot of people, you know, don't understand the value of hydration and how significant it is in, you know, your wellness. So can you talk to me about, you know, how important is hydration and what are some ways that, you know, we can stay properly hydrated? That's a great question because three out of four American adults are chronically dehydrated cause them to look and feel bloated, have less energy, have more headaches, bunch of bad things. And I always say, 
have a water bottle within arm's reach at all times, it's super beneficial. That is one of the many easy wins. It doesn't really take time, doesn't really take effort, but it moves the needle in your favor because the more hydrated you are, the less hungry you are, the less likely you are to binge on junk food. Now, if you forget to always have a water bottle within arm's reach, you can also have three different water bottles in the three locations you spend the most time in. Mm -hmm. So that could be the car, the office, the living room, as an example. And that way you always have a water bottle close by, so it's difficult to forget. Because if I'm working on a project and I have to walk 30 seconds to take a water bottle, I probably wouldn't do it. But if I just have to reach, it makes it a lot easier to stay hydrated. Another thing to do is drink from a straw instead of like a bottle. And honestly, try different bottles as weird as that sounds. Some bottles, it's just easier to drink water from. You just want to drink water. Even though water tastes like water, different bottles create, make you crave more water than other bottles. So keep trying it out. And probably the best tip to stay hydrated is to just not even drink water, but consume foods or drinks that have a lot of water in them. Mm. So you the taste of water, tea, soda, and by soda, I don't mean like Coke. I mean um, Sprite, 7-Up, and sparkling water. And you have that. You can get soup, especially if you're in a cold, cold country. Soup is basically water, vegetables, and meat. Fantastic choice. So you can always get soup. You can get pho. You can get tea, any of that. And also fruits. Something that I have tried three weeks ago that I've never tried before, but now I'm in love with it, is papaya. I think it's mm. great. And it, I, I'm in a tropical place, so they have a lot of papaya. But also watermelon, cucumbers, melon, cantaloupe. All of those have a lot of water in them. Blueberries have a lot of water in them. So just eat a bunch of those, and that will not only fill you up, but it's a lot easier to remain hydrated. A whole papaya, which is bigger than your face, is 120 calories. Tastes phenomenal. Wow. And you can, it makes you feel full. So if you eat that, you don't even have to worry about trying to limit how much you eat. Eat as much papaya as you want, as an example, or blueberries, or watermelon, or cantaloupe, whatever you like. It is much of that as you'd like. And then you don't have to worry about hydration and you don't have to worry about overeating because you'll feel full throughout the day. Absolutely. Uh, we are going to take a quick water break. Speaking of hydration, we're going to take a water break. Uh, we're going to come back and continue this conversation. For those of you that are tuning in to our radio networks, 102.5, 106.5, KCAA, the station that leaves no listener behind, 1580, the fanatic, and as well as WCKG in Chicago. We'll be right back after this. For those of you that are live, stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. We're still here. Uh, you're listening to the Tackle Obesity Show. Coach's Corner. Having a coach is actually is, is a great thing, to be honest with you, in my mind, because a coach is going to always hold you accountable. A coach ain't going to be your friend. A coach is going to tell you the truth no matter what happens, and he's going to base uh, he or she are going to motivate you. <laughs> And you want to find you a coach that has already accomplished what you want to accomplish. So they're able to see things that you're not able to see. You get you a coach that have already walked the path so your path can be easy. So get you someone that can speak life into you, someone that can guide you, someone that has a system that's going to work for you. This program, which is now called Tackle Obesity. So it went from let's talk about it so let's get our guys well, to now let's inspire the world to tackle obesity themselves and empower people to do it. So we're partnering with a lot of different folks to do it, reach out and communicate and train and inspire people and then support them in their journey. Remember, obesity is a medical condition, not a character flaw. To learn more about the NFL, alumni's ongoing commitment to our community and kids, Go to TackleObesity.com. And we are back here on Tackle Obesity. Uh, we are so grateful to have all of you and to join us here with our new teammate, Mr. Daniel Raz. I want to reemphasize something that was said in those commercials. 
Obesity is a medical condition, not a character flaw. So make sure you understand and, and share that because there's a lot of misinformation about what obesity is. Uh, it has very little to do with your with your your character. Uh, there's so many different layers and caveats to this disease. It's one of the most complex um, um, diseases out there. And unfortunately, it doesn't get diagnosed as it is because it's sneaky, it's deceptive. It hides behind other conditions, but it's the root cause. So that's what we're doing here is we're attacking and we're addressing the root cause. Uh, I want to send a shout out to all of our, our, our teammates um, to my friends, uh, Kevin and Val, the, the foodie, stay fit. I tried that, that breakfast bowl recipe uh, to Thursday. Highly recommend. So definitely go check them out on Instagram. It is delicious. Uh, thank you so much, Success Fitness. Thank you so much. I love it. We love you. Uh, and we continue to grow this team. So your favorite person who is in this battle against obesity, if they got stories to share, if they got struggles, they got challenges, Tag them, bring them in. We want we want to grow this team. Our goal is to fill an entire NFL stadium with people that are in this battle against obesity. That's how serious we are again about this. And again, you know, we're thankful to have our newest our newest member of the team, uh, Coach Daniel Raz, here today uh, to talk to us about this battle. And we are not about talk; we're about film around here. Because we, we follow the mindset, the same mindset in football is, is film over feelings. So I want to show you, for those of you that are on the live, and if you're listening on the radio station, uh, you can go to our website and see these before and after photos. Um, these are people that specifically Daniel helped coach to success. So I'll, uh, let's, let's go ahead and look at the first photo here. Look at this man. Now, he went from June to October. So uh, tell us about this, this, this gentleman, Daniel. So this is Sebastian. He has two young kids. And just like all my best testimonials, he was extremely skeptical. He didn't think it would work for him. He didn't think online coaching would help. He was extremely busy. He didn't think it was even possible. But he actually was able to lose 50 pounds, go from 250 to 200 in those four months, despite work being extremely hectic, despite him working from home because he did everything right. He communicated with me every day. And I would say the difference between my clients that get phenomenal results and the clients that only get good results is mm -hmm. the clients that get phenomenal results communicate with me every day. Every time they're traveling, they let me know. Whenever they're in a the restaurant, they send me a picture of the menu. Whenever life is extra hectic, they tell me about it. Because if you say everything is good and when things are not good, if you didn't tell me that you ate the donut, if mm -hmm. you <laughs> pretend it's all sunshine and rainbows when you had a bad day, then I can't help you out. But if you let me know, hey, I messed up, I ate two donuts. And I'll be like, okay, cool, no problem. You don't have to punish yourself. Let's just keep going as it is. Because mm -hmm. life is not a boulevard of green lights. There's going to be ups and downs. But the difference between a plateau lasting a week or a plateau lasting a decade is simply having somebody to make those changes when things are hectic and he let me know he communicated with me absolutely every day and that's why he got such phenomenal results this is the mark of a good coach you you, you kind of gave me a flashback um back to my days as a player and i remember my first my first all pro season i was really feeling myself because i was like i was named as an all pro yeah i'm 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 the best tackle in the league that's literally what being an all pro means that you know i'm the best i'm the best at my position uh, as selected by my peers. And I came into camp that next year and I was very much out of shape and I, I failed the conditioning test. So they have a test for players. When you come back to camp, they give you conditioning drills just to make sure that, you know, you weren't just goofing off too much in the off season. I was, I goofed all the way off and I couldn't even run a hundred yards. So I got dropped from being a starter to practice squad just like that. And now mind you, I'm an, I'm an all pro. But that helped me so much to to stay focused because nothing's a given. Your health isn't a given. Your your livelihood and vitality aren't a given. And just because you make it to a point where you you get close to your goal or you achieve a goal, that don't mean that you stop and quit. That don't mean you go back to the, the things that you were doing before. 
So you you in in a in a very nice way <laughs> as compared to what I experienced. You know, you you got you redirected your your client back to what made them successful. And, you know, the things like sending you the pictures, talking to you about the bad days, the tough times and all that. These are these are key things that, as you mentioned, is, is something between someone who's highly successful or someone who just gets by to mm-hmm. use football terms. This is the difference between an all pro and somebody who's barely on the team. So it's, it's great that you pointed that out. Uh, we have a, a, an acronym that we use here as it pertains to wellness. It's called the NERD concept, nutrition, mm-hmm. exercise, rest, and de-stress. You got to do all four of those things. And it, it's, it's great that you you highlighted that. Uh, and this it really shows that, again, we you know, we, 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 we base our, our, our content here on results. So we have another picture here of one of your other clients. Let's, let's pull that one up. Wow, look at this one. For those of you that can see it, and you, again, if you listen to the radio station, go to the website, tacklebc.com, check this out. So tell us about this gentleman. So this is Tim. He's 67 years old, and he's actually from Germany. So even though those are 10-hour time zone difference, we were still able to get him phenomenal results. He came to me with what is called a quote-unquote wrecked metabolism. He said he tried everything. It's impossible for him to lose weight, no, no matter what, what he does. And yeah, he also travels a lot because he's a assistant movie producer, so he's never in the same place. He didn't know what he was going to eat because he was always in different restaurants, but he was still able to get phenomenal results, even though he worked out at home. Because again, I didn't tell him to run a marathon or to do a bunch of pull-ups or give him anything that he physically couldn't do. We started with very simple exercises, knee push-ups, simply walking for 20 minutes a day, wall sits or wall slides. If you're not sure what that is, you can go to my Twitter page. I post a bunch of different exercise examples. Mm-hmm. But exercises that he physically could do, because when he tried other exercise programs, he couldn't even physically do the exercise because he is a beginner. He didn't have the strength to do it. And because he didn't have the strength to do it, he gave up. But when I dialed the intensity back and allowed him to succeed and do exercises that he could do, he got encouraged and he saw progress. And that is when internal motivation kicked in. And even with his nutrition, even though he kept on moving to different places, we focused on the basics. When you're eating out, avoid sodas. You can order double meat. You can always order a bowl instead of the burrito. There's always certain options. And because he always sent me the menu of the options of the food that's available, and he told me what food he liked and he didn't like, I was able to guide him and point, hey, eat more of this, eat less of that. So despite him never having the same meal because he was never in the same restaurant, never in the same place, he was still able to get results because, again, he communicated with me a lot, and we started gradually. He didn't lose the 100 pounds in a week or a month, right? This is a long Mm -hmm. process. But he stopped the process. He kept communicating with me and, yeah, was able to lose weight despite being in his late 60s. And this 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 shows that there's no there are no boundaries to to your ability to achieve success. Um, you have a young client, you have an older client yep. and they both had the same track. They both had the same mindset. And most importantly, they both had a strong coach who helped them get across the finish line. So. You know, you mentioned something that I, I really think is important because a lot of people are busy, you know, especially, you know, after COVID you know, and, you know, after we, we getting back to, you know, a lifestyle where we're actually you know, got boots on the ground. We're going back to the office. We're going back. We're back in the schools now. We, we got so many different caveats. Um, a lot of people and, you know, forgive me, folks, that, that take this the wrong way, but a lot of people use that as an excuse. Mm-hmm. And you were able to coach your your, your clients around that. So uh, how how do you break that barrier of you know people using their busy lifestyle as an excuse not to accomplish wellness? Definitely. So I mentioned the concept of easy wins a couple of times. So I'm going to dive into it because mm-hmm. once you master all the easy wins, you are able to lose weight without taking any extra time. And once you see the skill go down with you spending zero extra time within your week, that motivates you to obviously do it when you're extremely busy. And when life does get less hectic, 
then you're able to go into overdrive in terms of your results. So I'm going to give you a bunch of examples of easy wins so you can do it. Even if you have zero time, you're not spending any extra time. Quick example, for the people that are watching this, this is a standing desk. Right now I'm standing. I knew I was going to have this conversation. Might as well stand. Every time I'm talking on the phone, I'm never sitting. I'm always standing and moving. I'm going mm -hmm. to be talking anyways. Might as well move. It doesn't take any extra time, but you're burning more calories. As I mentioned previously, having a water bottle within arm's reach. It doesn't take time to drink more water, but it moves the needle in your favor. If you improve your sleep quality, you, your hormones are more balanced, meaning your ghrelin and leptin. Ghrelin is the hunger hormone makes you hungrier. Leptin is the fullness hormone makes you feel fuller. Your hormones are balanced, so you're more, you're less likely to crave junk food. You're less likely to make bad decisions. Mm -hmm. If you've ever been sleep deprived, you know that you're probably on edge. You're probably more annoyed. You probably have made decisions you're not proud of. But even though you might not be able to get eight hours of sleep every day, you can always control the quality of your sleep. If you do that, then it's a lot easier to not be as hungry to make better choices. So three quick tips to improve your sleep quality. Because again, I can't snap my fingers and make it so that there's 25 or 26 hours in the day allowing you to sleep for an extra hour or two. But if you improve your sleep quality, doesn't matter how busy you are, you will reap the benefits. So... Firstly, dark as possible. Blackout curtains, you can cover any electronic lights with a towel. You can have an eye mask, anything to make the room dark as possible. Secondly, cool room temperature. That's 65 degrees Fahrenheit, 19 degrees Celsius. You can have a thick blanket and a thin blanket. You can alternate. You can sleep naked. Once you do it once, you never want to go back. I have more freedom. You can take a hot shower or bath before bed. You can drink hot tea before bed, anything to cool you down. Thirdly, and arguably the most important, which everyone struggles with, is low stimulation before bed. You want to mm -hmm. avoid the news, social media, arguing with people. Yes. Instead, you want to journal, meditate, that sort of things. Absolutely. Uh, one of my personal things that I'll add in there is uh, with these these phones and devices, they have the ability for you to to pre-schedule like like I have I have a sleep mode, mm. and at 11 p.m. my phone goes into goes into do not disturb mode. The only people that can interrupt my sleep are my wife and my children, and it it, it and they know it darn well if she's not with me, but uh, it darn well better be an emergency. Uh, so all of my calls go to voicemail, all of my notifications for social media are off, all of my text messages. It'll go through, but I won't ping my phone. And it's not going to interrupt me while I'm sleeping. Uh, it is here, so vital yeah. to get that, that, that sleep in. That is so true. And here are two tips that you can do on your phone right now that I truly believe will change your life. Firstly, just as you mentioned, Richard, go to your phone, click on do not disturb and uh, accept favorites and add favorites, only people that actually matter, only people that truly need you in the emergency. And that should probably only be a few people, it shouldn't be your entire phone list. That mm -hmm. way, if you're getting random text messages or random phone calls from scammers, which happen to all of us, mm -hmm. they don't wake you up in the middle of the night. Because even if you don't answer the phone, if you hear a text message that keeps you up, you don't want that. Put your phone on during the or airplane mode and just simply add favorites. So if there's an emergency, you can handle that. And another thing I recommend everyone to do is to put your phone on grayscale. So if you have an iPhone, go to settings. Then in the search bar, type color filters. Go down to color filters, press on, and then there's grayscale. And then instead of colors, your phone is all gray. And that makes you well less addicted to your phone. And especially at the night, you won't waste time scrolling or wasting a bunch of time. And if you do that, you'll probably save yourself an extra hour, two, three hours a day for mindless scrolling because you won't have as much dopamine. And you can spend that time working out. So this is how you created <laughs> working out time out of thin air. Put your phone on grayscale all the time, in my opinion, and you'll be way less addicted to your phone. I think that's a... Tip that everyone should 
flying. That's an incredible tip. That's the first time I heard it. I'm gonna I'm gonna do that myself. That's incredible. And speaking of technology, uh, again, this is also something that can be both a blessing and a curse. Uh, we do have technology now. You know, I'm I'm wearing a a smartwatch. I won't say your name because you haven't paid us yet. So you know who you are. If you if you want to have your name mentioned on Tackle the BC show, hit us up, and we'll be happy to represent your brand. But I'm not saying your name until then. Uh, but smart technology, uh, phones, uh, watches. Uh, there's even a ring now that I saw. Uh, I have a smart scale. I have food scale that talks to my phone. I have an app where I can take a picture of food and it logs it. Um, me and my wife and I have a, a group just between the two of us. Um, but we can add more people if we wanted to where, you know, she shares what she eats. I share what I eat. Etc. So we, we're keeping each other accountable. So, th you know, that's that's the good side. These are just examples. There are so many other things. There's even smart exercise equipment. There's a, excuse me, jump ropes. Um, you name it. I've even, uh, I even had a chance to talk to my good friend, Sean Merriman, uh, former uh, San Diego Charger. He's, I'm the guy always going to be San Diego with me, San Diego Charger. He has exercise equipment that has chips in it. Um, you know, and he owns a ultimate fighting league. And so it tracks the metrics of, you know, how fast they were moving, how hard someone's punch, et cetera. He has that same technology in exercise equipment. So it, it tracks like your heart rate, your, your blood pressure, all of that while you're working out. So there's an incredible amount of technology out there. Unfortunately, there's a lot of uh, technology out there that have the opposite effect. As you kind of mentioned, social media is probably the biggest one. But our lifestyles, we work on computers now, mostly. We sit at, we sit at, at, at our desk all day. Children learn um, not from books or, or, you know, there's even a struggle, uh, sort of a power struggle between physical education and, you know, electronic learning. Um, kids aren't on the playgrounds anymore playing basketball, football. You are a basketball player. You can definitely relate to this. Uh, kids aren't out there playing basketball anymore. They're playing the basketball on PlayStation or Xbox. So how do we break that cycle? And, you know, of course, we can't get rid of technology. We've had too many advances. We have some things that we just act, we actually need. We have some great advances in technology. Mm -hmm. But how do we break that cycle of our dependence on technology and, and, and how it's impacting us in a negative way as it pertains to this, this wellness journey? That is a fantastic question. And I think everyone that has kids should realize that you lecturing your kids to exercise more and to stop playing video games and to eat less junk food probably won't do anything. But if you lead by example, if you don't even say anything to your kids, but they see you drop 100 pounds, they will likely follow and say, hey, my dad did this, maybe I can do it too. If instead of lecturing them, you take ownership and say, hey, I'm going to invest in my health because this is important to me and I won't try to figure this out on my own because I failed on my own and that's okay. I'll hire a professional who's done this tons of times with people just like me and they see you transform, they see you lose a hundred pounds and keep it off for good, they will have so much more belief in themselves that they can do it too. Because if you look at your kids in the eyes and say, hey, you can accomplish anything, but your health is not where you want it to be, your life isn't where you want it to be, they're not going to believe you. But mm -hmm. there's a lot more confidence that can be portrayed when you talk, when you have actually done something that's meaningful and something that's not easy. So if you think about, hey, I'm doing this not just for myself, but for my kids, the reason why I'm overcoming this huge challenge, this huge barrier is because it's more than about me. I'll be an inspiration to others. Because Sebastian, uh, the first person you showed who lost 50 pounds, his mm -hmm. brother uh, didn't see him for a few months. And then he kept on touching him, be like, what? How did you lose so much weight? Well, this is crazy. That motivated him. He didn't, Sebastian didn't have to lecture his brother or be like, hey, you should do the same. He's like, okay, wow, I see it's possible now. Because mm -hmm. if you see someone on social media lose 100 pounds, that's cool, cool, whatever. But if your family member, if somebody that you personally know who you're in contact with and they lost that weight, 
they you'd inspire them. They would really want to take action. So remember that making this change is more than just about you. You literally have the power to influence every person that you come in contact with just by prioritizing yourself. Absolutely. And that is, that is such amazing information that, that you shared there because, you know, as you mentioned, you know, it's, it's great to see things on social media, but going through this journey, you're a walking billboard of success. All the people that you interact with, they they see the the live breeding example of it before and after. And, you know, I, I personally, you know, when I when I went through my journey, which I'm still going through, you know, I had people ask, was I OK? You know, are, are, are you are you OK? I saw that you you lost a lot of weight. Um, you know, you, you look sick. And I, I had to I had to redirect that those comments because no, 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 I'm not sick now because I lost 120 pounds. I was sick when I was 425 pounds. I was sick when I had gout, when I had high blood pressure, when I had an A1C uh, level that was elevated to pre-diabetes that I didn't know about. You know, when I had heart palpitations, when I when I, I couldn't even walk, you know, from one side of the park on the other. That's when I'm sick. Not when I lose weight and, I, and I, I, I'm, I'm more vital. Uh, so that is that to, that's the, the the reprogramming that we have to do in these conversations about what obesity is and 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 just re, redirect people's mind mindsets. Uh, thank you, Kathleen, for the comment there. Learned a lot from you guys. We're, we're, that's what we're all about. We're, we're glad that you're learning and uh, continue to to share this content because that's what we're all about. You know, it's about we're about learning. Um, and we have another comment here for Russell. Sleep is critical. If you are awake, you absolutely. If you are awake, you you will eat. Absolutely. So great, great comments there. Um, so one of the things I do want to touch touch on is understanding what wellness is. And notice I said wellness, not weight, because weight is, I think of it like this. I think of weight is like how much gas you have in, in the tank of your car, which is fine if your if your gas needle is on full. What about if the battery lights on, the check engine lights mm -hmm. on, your car is overheating, uh, the 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 front passenger the light bulb is out and that light is on, your brake lights are on. So there there are metrics. There's a dashboard of different things that tell you. These are indicators. You know, for those of you who are driving around in the, in your car with that service engine light on, is it's not a decoration. Your car is trying to tell you something's wrong. Your body does the same thing in subtle ways or sometimes not so subtle ways. So what are some things that you coach your clients on other than weight that they should be looking at uh, as, as factors for, for their wellness? That's a great question because you can smoke crack and jack hole and, and you will likely lose a bunch of weight because mm -hmm. you'll be a jack addict and all of them are extremely scrawny and they look like skeletons. Mm -hmm. That's not the goal. The goal is to be healthy. Now, oftentimes, the first step is to simply lose weight because after that, you are able to do a lot more. When, as you mentioned, it doesn't matter if you have your engine light on or you have a broken mirror. If you have no gas, <laughs> then you can't even drive the car. You can't do anything. So you have to, that's the first thing, but it, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean it's the only thing. This is the first thing that you should tackle. But a big reason why my clients don't just lose weight, but they also experience a bunch of benefits internally that they didn't even think about. Get off CPAP, get off medications, have a lot more energy, throw away half the closet because not, nothing fits anymore, have less allergies. A lot of people say that they sweat a lot less. They used to always be hot even if it was 60 degrees. Now they lost 95 pounds. They, uh, they are not always sweating. Right, mm -hmm. so they can fit better on the plane or in roller coaster rides or in cars. Mm -hmm. So many things that people don't even think about unless they actually experienced it. People say that people treat them differently at work and even strangers when they meet them. Right, there's so many other benefits. And as you mentioned, it's not just about losing weight, but doing it in a healthy way. So, uh, big concept I like to drill into my client's head is that diet is about, a healthy diet is about expanding how much food you eat, not diminishing. Because it's not about eating less food you enjoy, it's about finding new foods that you enjoy. 
I, as I mentioned earlier, I've never tried papaya up until three weeks ago. Now I love it. Now it's a staple. So if every couple of weeks you try a new food that you've never tried before, a new fruit or vegetables or fish as an example, then eventually you find more foods that you enjoy and that are healthy and tasty and you add them into your arsenal. And that way, instead of eating less foods that you enjoy, you expand the amount of healthy and tasty foods that you have. And if you keep on expanding it, then you have a lot of options of healthy and tasty foods. And if you eat that 89% of the time, then losing weight and being healthy becomes a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It is so important to understand, understand the numbers. Uh, just like football, you have to understand what all those numbers mean. It's more than just the score. You got to understand how many yards you have rushing, uh, how many yards you're allowing, um, turnovers, all of that. All those those numbers you have to understand. Uh, for me, where as a pertains to wellness, other things such as, you know, as I mentioned, you know, learning about what A1C is. I had no, I had never heard of what A1C is until I actually went and got blood work done. And I learned, oh, boy, I was pre-diabetic. I was on my way to having diabetes. Check engine light didn't come on yet, but it was about to. And things like percent body fat, proper hydration. Uh, of course, the one that that will come on, uh, one of the, the lights that will come on very quickly is your blood pressure. Uh, I had elevated blood pressure. I was to the point where I had to take medicine, which I'm, I'm thankful to say I'm no longer, you know, need, re required to have to take that just as a result of losing weight. And that check engine light for blood pressure is a critical one because it leads to other things such as high, high uh, di uh, stroke or, or heart disease, etc. So understanding your metrics is critical. It's more than just the weight. It's more than BMI, uh, which is a common one. Um, if you look at BMI alone, uh, one of the examples that I think of is uh, Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock, the popular movie star, wrestler, whatever you want to call him. If you base it on BMI alone, he's morbidly obese. I think it's pretty fair to say that's not the case. The eyeball test really tells us that he's not morbidly obese, but it's, that's an example of why you don't look at just one thing, why you don't just look at weight, why you don't just look at BMI. You have to look at the entire dashboard to see how the car is running. And that is a, just a great piece of information that you gave there, uh, you provided us with so many wonderful tools and resources. So uh, if for those that are listening or watching, if they want to reach out to you, Coach Daniel, how, how can they find you? So just like you found me, I'm most active on Twitter or X at DanielDraws underscore fit. My pin tweet is a bunch of testimonials. So you saw two. If you scroll, you'll see an infinite amount because this is what I do. I love doing this. And you can also check me out. Daniel Ross underscore fit on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, all of that. I just happen to like Twitter the most, but I'm slowly putting more video content on YouTube and Instagram, so I'll definitely get bigger there soon. And my website is danielrazfit.com. So that's D-A-N-I-L-R-A-Z-F-I-T.com. Check me out there. If you're serious about sustainably losing weight, I'll be happy to talk to you to see if us working together makes sense. Absolutely. And the wonderful thing about this team is that every single one of our members is a Hall of Famer. So they are mm -hmm. on our website. You will see Daniel, Coach Daniel on our website soon. You'll see his page on there. So remember to go to tackleobesity.com. We need you guys to share this content. If you have struggles, if you have successes, if you want to be a member of the Tackle Obesity team, Follow us. Reach out to us. That's what we're here for. We're building a super team. Um, quick quote point for us. Percent body fat is the most critical measurement of wealth. I agree. I agree. Absolutely. Um, but reach out to us. And, you know, we we want more members of the team. There There is no roster limit on on this team. Everyone is a, is a, is a member of this team. We all play in the same game. We're all fighting the same battle. So, Coach Daniel, thank you again. This will not be the last time we, we had this conversation. Uh, we look forward to, to having you as, as one of our key members of the team moving forward. Uh, so, guys, make sure you follow Coach Daniel on social media. Check out his page coming soon on the Tackle Obesity website. And uh, continue to share this interview and, and all his content as well. So uh, we're so grateful to have you as a member on this team. Two-Minute Drill.
I took a, a 12 year old and I was like, hey, you're getting ready for your first year as a freshman. You want to get ready for sports. What do you think your plate should look like? That 12 year old could probably know I should avoid donuts. I should have some green on there. I should have some lean meat. It is a lack of education. Well, sometimes we get sold off in the intricacies. So we want to maybe shortcut or have a fast track. But in general, we know we shouldn't be eating that donut. To touch on what Daniel was saying, we need to learn how to read labels a lot better. Yes. Uh, a lot of people don't even look at the label, let alone the calories, let alone the protein, let alone the carbs, let alone the fats, especially the ingredients, right? So try to avoid these processed foods as much as possible at these grocery stores, at these gas stations. The statement of you are what you eat can't be more true. It, you really are what you eat and your body breaks it down and it goes into your cells. You know? Learning labels will be very important. The temptation is real. You know, the temptation, sometimes it wins, you know, and, and it's okay because we came to understanding that like, if if we eat an Oreo or we whatever food that we eat, that's not gonna that's not gonna really set you back anything, you know. It, it, that's not uh, uh, it's not gonna kill your diet. It's not gonna kill you know the progress that you made. So that's yeah, it's all in moderation. You know, you can incorporate all those foods uh, that you enjoy while you're still living that healthy lifestyle. Remember, obesity is a medical condition, not a character flaw. To learn more about the NFL alumni's ongoing commitment to our community and kids, go to TackleObesity.com. Welcome to another Tackle Obesity show featuring Coach Richard Walker, our host, members of the NFL alumni, lifestyle weight loss experts, and key social media influencers that are making a difference. Now, Coach Richard Walker. Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Tackle Obesity. Thank you all so much for joining us today. It is the final, final, final Tackle Obesity episode of the month of March, a.k.a. Tackle Obesity Month. Uh, once again, we want to give a very, very warm, sincere thank you to the, the wonderful city of New York and its leadership team. Uh, they, For those of you that, that are not aware, we received a proclamation from the mayor of New York and the city of New York for the Tackle Obesity Movement. Uh, the, all this information is on our website. There's the proclamation right there. Uh, we are so excited that the leadership of the biggest city in the United States stepped up first. They stepped up first and said, we want in on Tackle Obesity. We're your teammates. We're there with you. Uh, so, and actually, I just left New York. I literally just landed about 45 minutes ago uh, from New York. So, I, I just want to thank you guys so much again. Uh, my question to all of those who are watching, who's next? What city's next? Uh, Houston, Phoenix, uh, Los, Los Angeles. What's up? Out Atlanta. I'll, I'll start calling you guys out. Who's next? Who's next? New York made the first move. So, who's next? So, I am so, so, so excited to introduce our newest teammate, because you, we don't use the guest word around here. Guests are people who visit your, your home or your business for one time and they never come back. We have teammates around here. So my our newest teammate is got so much information that he's going to share with you. He is also has a podcast that you need to subscribe to and you need to follow on all podcast platforms. He's also on YouTube. It's called the Success Fitness Podcast. And uh, his name is Christian Evans. And I'm going to bring him in now. Mr. Christian, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great, brother. It is so great to have you. We are so happy to have you on the Tackle Obesity team. I appreciate it. I appreciate the reach out. Okay. So tell all of our followers about you and, and your background, like what what got you ignited and, and interested in, in getting into the to wellness game? Well, in 2013, I began, I would say, kind of loosely researching different diet plans, different ways to improve my health. I've always worked out, but I just never had my diet together. I would, mm -hmm. you know, 
lose 20 pounds, put 22 back on in the next couple of weeks. You know, that yo-yo thing, right? Mm-hmm. And one day I just sat down, was watching just various TV shows, and something finally made sense. It clicked. And I said, you know what? Let me go ahead and, and try this. And, you know, I tried it. Um, 10 months later, I end up losing 187 pounds. Wow. And from there, I began sharing my story of, you know, how I did it, why I did it, uh, where, you know, who, what, when, where, how, why, you know. And uh, I started a blog, a uh, website, or blog website. Uh, even to this day, I still don't necessarily know how to identify it. So I just call it a blog site where I would document the who, what, when, where, how, and why, because I would get questions, you know, similar mm-hmm. to this one that I'm answering. And I would write it out, you know, or I would record videos. So video tutorials about, you know, um, how I did it and, um, you know, what I did as far as, you know, workouts and diets and, um, you know, food, meal prep tutorials, you know, just the whole gambit, you know, whatever my life was at that time, I put a camera to my face <laughs> and uh, whatever I was doing and then posted it, you know, and went far as from there. Eventually I ended up starting a, um, a podcast because writing and on the blog site took a little bit too much time for me. So it was better off for me to just talk, you know, to talk in a microphone. Um, I was doing that. Uh, end up becoming a certified personal trainer kind of by mm-hmm. accident. And uh, just with all that, just being said, uh, you know, here I am pretty much right now. So super, you know, fast forward. So this has been going on for, let's say, let's say 10 years, you know, since 2014. Wow. So from 2013, 10 months later in May, um, I hit my goal weight. And then from there, you know, began, you know, my, uh, my yeah. blog, as <laughs> uh, far as from there, similar to what happened with you. I was legit mm-hmm. maybe like two months out from um, um, making my blog go live or whatever. And my mm-hmm. first my my car went out <laughs> my engine my engine blew out <laughs> on the expressway man it was december uh, maybe like a week or so before my birthday and i was like maybe a mile out from the exit to go to my house and my engine just went out so that was one so i'm like okay at least i got my blog to kind of work on to get my mind off of that uh mm-hmm. within maybe that same week my computer my laptop finally went up and oh. I had to put like everything on hold, everything on hold uh, for an entire year, for an entire year. So I wanted to release it in like 2015, mm-hmm. my blog, but I ended up having to like take a year off. And, you know, that gave me time to rethink how I wanted to approach it and, um, you know, revamp some things, you know. Um, and so from there, uh, that's, you know, my blog was released and, uh, you know, went public and, you know, that was fun. And then it ended up evolving into the podcast. And at first it was called the Christian's Weight Success. But uh, yeah, the Christian's Weight Success podcast. But uh, again, things change. We all evolve. And I began noticing that it was too personal. It was too mm-hmm. personal as far as for, for me. Um, because that was what my uh, blog site was called. Uh, Christian's Weight Success in .net. And I wanted to be more communal, more, more, more community. So I ended up changing it maybe about almost going on about two years to the success fitness podcast. So um, I still record workout tutorials, meal prep tutorials. I'm still a personal trainer and, um, you know, I'm all just I'm trying to have more fun. So more fun with with all of this. And now you're a coach on the Tackle Obesity team. How about that? Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate so, it. so, uh, question for you, Coach. And you, you, you kind of touched on this uh, with, with your own journey. Uh, there are so many different things out there, Coach. Like, there's, yeah. you name it. There's the the fly a kite diet. Uh, there's the turn your key counterclockwise diet. There's yeah. the drink water standing up diet. You name it. There are like a trillion different quote unquote diets out there, right? Right. And unfortunately, the, the fact of the matter is, it's big business. It's money behind right. all of this right and it's some of it some of it's legit some of it's not a, a very a very significant portion of it isn't it's a fad it's it's the fantasy uh it's the the magic pill the magic wand uh you do this and you will lose 60 pounds in in 30 days right 
So how are we as, you know, people that are in the journey, in, in, the, in this movement, how do we separate the facts from the fad? You know what? To answer the question, you know, we live in this information age. And to me, it seems like nobody wants to do the research or there is or are those who do not want to do the research for themselves. And that's kind of scary. Um, being 42 and understanding how the world works right now and realizing how it's been working and you can kind of see the trajectory of where it can will or may go you have to do your own due diligence right Um, because there are a lot of sensationalized things that are out there right now to get your eyes on it to get your fingers to click on it to get your ears to hear it and you have to pray for discernment you understand um I made a tweet earlier today. It's like, you know, how do we get to a point to where adults we're so comfortable letting everybody know we don't or can't read, you know, I'm um, seeing a lot of sensationalized, let's say headlines, which is the media's job to make the headlines look like that. And how is it that you can just run with that headline without clicking that little link right there? If it's provided and if it's not, Why won't you do your own research? So to answer the question is you have to do your own research. You have to do your own research and don't go with the first article that is on Google or DuckDuckGo, wherever you got. And we live in this information age and we all have these phones. We all, we all have, you know, the access to it. You understand what I'm saying? But it's really telling when we choose not to. So, in the words of Kanye, slavery is a choice. You understand mm. what I'm saying? And so mm-hmm. when you have the access to the information, you're choosing to not educate yourself to become free, to become uh, more liberated than what you are. Now, does it take time? It does. You know, will there be some confusion in there? Yes. But this is where you constantly research and you update. There has been a lot of things that I've read yesterday and it's changed today. And I'm okay with that because with time comes evolution and evolution of information. I think we want absolutes and that's fine too, but we have to realize what is an absolute, you know, when has anything ever been an absolute (laughs) other than taxes (laughs) and energy? That's an absolute. (laughs) Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And and so, you know, with that being said, the overall history, when it comes to, let's say nutrition, diets, workouts, or whatever, they've always evolved and be okay with that. You know, be okay with that. So with that evolution, it says, okay, well, let me double check. Let me just, just check. You know, we can have skepticism or speculations on certain things, but not, you know, when it comes to diet, you know, it's people pick and choose when they want to be selective or, um, you know, optimistic on certain things but then when it comes to what you should as an individual be responsible for for your own health and well-being we tend to stop and i don't have an answer for that it's just an observation that i've just recently Mm kind of learned to articulate because it's been uh you know it's just it's just been you know a funny funny time and i'm sitting back and i'm learning to try to not to respond to things immediately, initially, without doing some form of due diligence, without right. some form of due diligence. Have I pulled the trigger and asked questions later? Yeah, yeah, I have. But I also can admit that when I did that, I was wrong. You know what I mean? Or, hey, I stand corrected. You know, based on recent findings or based on updated information, here is my new outlook on that and be okay with that. You know, Mm. um, there are those who just want to be right regardless. And that chase to do that is very scary. You know what I mean? Like nobody can tell you anything different. Nobody can offer you an additional point of view on how, you know, your view or your stance could either change or honestly just be more solid. But it's just that refusal to accept to, you know, entertain, an additional point of view other than yours. So with all, with all that being said, people have to do their own 
due diligence and research things themselves. You know, we're we're too old to be solely dependent on somebody else. You know, you understand what I'm saying? It all has to mm-hmm. be a collective. And don't be afraid to reach out for help too. That's the absolutely thing to where, that's critical. Know, just to reach out for help. Everybody needs help. Everybody should have a help, a mentor, a sage, a guide, or whatever. And I think once one can let's say accept that then they can be successful as the other person who's had success at, let's say, um, within their fitness journey, right? And you will realize the people who've had success in their fitness journey, their secret is 90, I would say, I'd say 90% of the time is that they've had help. They've had a guide. They've they asked coach. questions. They had, they had coach, a coach. A trainer. They had a coach, or yeah. some, some type of Some type of North Star, some type of compass. You understand right. what I'm saying? And um, once one realizes that is what it will take, then they can become more successful in their fitness journey. Absolutely. And coach, you you just you you just on fire, man. You, you actually <laughs> answered one of the questions before I even had a, had a chance to ask it. But uh, one of the things that uh, I, I touched on at the beginning of the show was the statistics talking about why people, why we have so many people that start these resolutions and they fail. Right now, today is the end of quarter one. Statistically speaking, 85% of people who started a New Year's resolution are already done. So 15% left, and another 6% of those are going to fall off at some point for the remainder of the year. So we're going to, statistically speaking, we're finished right, right. around 9%. Completion. Right, 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 right. So what are some of the most common reasons that people fail, and how do we avoid those things? Um. Again, going back to help, you know, it's I'm going to do it on my own. I'm going to do it on my own. And I'm saying all this because I've been guilty of it. I'm not going to talk about something that I have not either been through uh, directly, personally, or have experienced in myself. This is not so much an observation of the public, but more of an observation of myself within the the public sphere. You know what I mean? I have went through mm-hmm. my time of, hey, you know, new year, new me. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And Mm -hmm. I'm not reaching out for help. You know, I'm not doing my research. I'm just doing what I feel. You know, we're in this day and age where everybody's in their feelings. This is how I feel. So this is what I'm going to do. This is how I feel. And this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to move because how I feel. Other than, you know what, it's cool if that's how you feel, but try to hone it down. You know, hone it, hone it in a little bit more. Since you are feeling this way, who has, who can you join who's felt this way and had a similar goal that you have and reached that pinnacle, reached that mountaintop that can possibly help you. And the refusal to do that can result in failure and has resulted in failure. You know, that's one, not reaching out for help. Um, And the other one is thinking that it's, I would say, now this is just off the top of the head, you know, thinking that all this stuff is, let's say, cute because you may see it done on, social media, whatever platform you prefer, you know, Twitter, X, IG, Facebook, you know, or whatever, um, being somebody who creates content, um, watching others create content, being in the same room, in the same space, in the same gym as those who create content. Some people are only setting up for just that one shot. You understand Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Just that Mm -hmm. one shot. It's not a, it's not a totality of said workout. You know right. what I mean? It's not like, hey, you know what? I'm in the middle of my work. I'm going to set my camera there, shoot it, and then I'm going to continue continue on. And I saw that with my own eyes, and I was surprised when that happened. I was shooting content with somebody one time, and they just did that. And here I am. I'm thinking, based off of what I saw on the internet of them, I'm like, oh, you're shooting content like me, kind of like right in the middle of your work. I'm doing that. And you realize that was just a lie. You know what I mean? And I said, oh, okay. So I always keep that in my Rolodex, my mental Rolodex when I'm watching social media. And I'm like, man, there's a possibility. The possibility that they're just doing this for the shot or whatever Mm -hmm. I see is that, you know what I'm saying? Is it, which Mm -hmm. is fine in its own self too, because you have to realize you have to be able to, once again, discern, be able to discern what you see as, you know, what's real and, and what's not. And so when people are, you know, wanting to go on their fitness journey 
and they're looking at everybody else and it can be inspirational. It can be motivational. I, I, I get that. But then when you realize you got to do it on your own, when you realize is that after a 45 minute workout session with me, you have to go home when you leave me and make those choices on your own of, are you going to stick to your nutritional plan or not? And if you don't, you know, it's not the end of the world, but how are you going to bounce back? Like you said earlier, it's like, man, you know, the, the ride was supposed to be there. If you didn't, you know, mm -hmm. I was supposed to set up at this hotel and, you know, this happened. You have to constantly be able to adjust. And there will be times where it's like, I don't know how to adjust. And that's cool, too. You know, we've all gotten to the point where it's like, man, I'm just stuck. I don't know where to go left, right, front or back. And you just stand there, but not making a choice equals stagnation. But you don't want to make the wrong choice, but you have to make one nonetheless. And that's tough, too. And you got to live with it. And that kind of goes back to what I said earlier is that people want to they want to be more right than anything and mm -hmm. afraid to make a mistake. You know, they're afraid to make a mistake. And there will be times where you have to be OK with making that mistake. Say, hey, you know what? I made a mistake. I was wrong. Now it's like, how am I going to fix it? Now am I going to seek out again help from somebody who's been through this and can help me out? Or am I going to repeat the same thing I just did? And if I do, how am I adjusting? You know what I mean? So it's just, it, it does come down to personality. It comes down to your will. Like, what is it that you really want to do? And lastly, it's what's your overall goal? Some people just say, hey, you know, I want to, I just want to lose weight. And it's like, well, what's your why? You know, what's your why? You're trying to fit into some some pants, a smaller pants. Are you trying to fit into a wedding dress? Are you trying to fit into a tuxedo? You know, by what date? Because if you have a day and dates of when your weight loss, you know, journey, you know, may end or whatever your goal, you have a little bit more at stake. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. To complete that. You have a target. That. Yeah, yeah, a target, a target. And again, I've been through all of that where it's like, oh, I just want to lose weight, just lose weight. You know, it doesn't have to be a ginormous, you know, stake or whatever, wherever is that, with that stake, but it has to be something, you know, there's been plenty of times where I'm responding to inboxes and people are asking me to, you know, help them. And I'm like, okay, so what's your goal? And okay. They say 20 pounds. I'm like, okay, by when? And they may not know. And then I help them try to, you know, entertain some thoughts of trying to connect that that number of weight they want to lose to an actual mm -hmm. date, you know what I mean? And what you do in between, you know, these hands and this hand is how you're going to get to that. You understand what I'm saying? So Absolutely. that's how, that's just how things work. You know, you have a goal and what's at stake and who's going to help you get there. And that's just honestly how things work. But when somebody just is kind of being impulsive, and we've all been there, they just do it. And then when they fail at it or they come to a detour, they get so down, they get so down that they don't want to try again. Absolutely. And Co Coach Christian, you have a unique perspective because you're the first member of our team uh, besides myself that has a platform where you speak to others. Uh, you have an actual podcast and, you mm -hmm. know, all of our other teammates, you know, they have their own unique things that, you know, some of them are, 100% down in nutrition, 100% down in there. You're, you're sort of in the middle of all of that. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, you have a podcast, you have a platform where you're reaching out to these people. And one of the things I know, because I've, I've been here, especially when we first started this, is the silence. It's the, you you you, you have this burning desire in you to, to share this message and to reach out to people and try to yeah. touch people, but you don't hear the reverb. You don't see... Yeah. The traction, you know, talk, tell, take us through it because I want everyone to hear this, not just for me. Take us through that mental journey of where you go from having a voice and you put content out there, you put information out there, and you don't hear back for a while. You're like, hey, is this worth doing it? Like, how do you, how do you as a host deal with that struggle of putting information out there and not receiving feedback? you asked a very interesting question and I may be long winded on it, but uh, you know, I feel like Kevin Hart <laughs> on drink champs. He said, F and I'm going to say it. It's when you asked, 
how do how did I deal with it? It sounds like in past tense, and I will update. It's how do I deal with it because I'm currently going through it, and it's okay. like ongoing, right? It mm-hmm. it's ongoing, and it reminds me of the Kanye West and Kobe Bryant commercial when you know Kanye is saying, you know, hey, I'm the best rapper out, and Kobe's like more. You know, I've I've sold this, and Kobe's saying more. You know, I did this, and Kobe's saying more. And it's that kind of thought process where Kanye's figuring out, it's like, well, I've done what I feel that I could do. And it's this realization that there's always more. There's always more. You know, that's one side to it. Then the other side to it can be is, you know, not good enough, right? Is this content good enough? Was it not good enough? Um, How do I judge that what is my what is my basis you know to do this what is what's my why and these questions constantly go on these questions constantly go on on and on and on you know in your head and you just you just you just keep going you know you just keep going there are times to where when I am feeling like that and versus spreading let's say that vibe that negative vibe I just won't post or I just won't record. Um, my last podcast full of transparency was maybe about three or four weeks ago um, mm-hmm. because I kind of going through this phase to where I'm asking myself again, what's my why? You know, what am I doing this for? And your return on investment. And if your return on investment you know, is financial, because we all have to take care of ourselves. This illusion that content creators should not be compensated financially is mm-hmm. insane to me, you mm-hmm. know, because it's the amount of work that goes in this software that we're using. You, you have to able. answer the why question twice. Yes. You have to answer it for yourself mm-hmm. and for you. Yes. And right. if you can connect your why to everybody else's why, I believe that's where the community can come in. And your community can help you out too, because you're just human too. You know, just because we put a camera in our face doesn't mean we're perfect. You know what I mean? It's just that we have a voice that we're, you know, we're putting things out there. You know what I mean? I do better at, I do better at talking in action versus typing and texting to me, you know? Um, And it's like, Hey, why is this happening? Or why is this happening? Or, Hey, this is how I feel. You know, what is this? And I've had, uh, my community reach out to me, inbox me, say, hey, Christian, you know, look at it this way or look at it that way. And I have to be open, even though it's not my thought, it's somebody else's thought from the outside looking in. And there's a lot of times as content creators, we are on the inside looking out and we are so attached to it. Everything that we make, we're so attached to it. And there came a time to when I had to learn to do to detach myself so much from my content and I began to have an, a lot more fun to it because there is a psychological game you do have to play. There are questions or posts that I put out and I'm not 100% committed to it. And it's the illusion that I could be, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. that necessarily isn't it. It's just, hey, I may be looking for engagement. Some may call it trolling. I'm, you know, once again, that's Speaking the goal. Speaking of engagement. <laughs> Speaking of engagement, if you have a question, if you guys are watching live, I, I forgot to mention this. You got, if you have questions for Coach Christian, drop them in the chat. We'll get them on. For those of you that are listening to the radio broadcast or on the podcast platform, go to the tackleobesity.com website, tackleobesity.com, and then you will see Coach Christian's page there. You can also drop us a question. We'll be happy to get it to him. You, again, this is a two-way dialogue, and this is what, what we're going with that question. It's not just us talking. It's the, it's the feedback that we get from you that drives this this machine that keeps this thing going. And I, I just want to say thank you to so much to all of you guys that have reached out to us, even if it's just a question or a thought, um, positive, negative, whatever. We just want to hear from you guys. So again, tackleobesity.com. Uh, if, if you're on the one of the podcast platforms or on one of our stations, KCAA 106.5, 102.5, these station at least don't listen behind. Uh, case WCKG in Chicago, 1580 Fanatic in Phoenix. If you're on one of those, if you listen to us on one of those those platforms, go to the website because this is it's, you, you're gonna you're gonna be a little bit behind. We're not live there, but if you're listening to us on the live feed, drop a question in the chat. Anyhow, just get in touch with us. Get with us. 
Uh, we're going to take a really quick break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to have more with Coach Christian here. You tune into the Tackle BC Show. Coach's Corner. Having a coach is actually it is a great thing, to be honest with you, in my mind, because a coach is going to always hold you accountable. A coach ain't going to be your friend. A coach is going to tell you the truth no matter what happens, and he's going to base uh, he or she are going to motivate you. And you want to find you a coach that has already accomplished what you want to accomplish. So they're able to see things that you're not able to see. You get you a coach that have already walked the path so your path can be easy. So get you someone that can speak life into you, someone that can guide you, someone that has a system that's going to work for you. This program, which is now called Tackle Obesity. So it went from let's talk about it, so let's get our guys well, to now let's inspire the world to tackle obesity themselves and empower people to do it. So we're partnering with a lot of different folks to do it, reach out and communicate and train and inspire people and then support them in their journey. Remember, obesity is a medical condition, not a character flaw. To learn more about the NFL, alumni's ongoing commitment to our community and kids, go to TackleObesity.com. And we are back on the Tackle Obesity Podcast. Again, thank you so much to all of our teammates uh, for just contributing so much to this movement. Uh, it is just truly, truly an honor to, to be here for you every week. Again, if you have questions, thoughts, comments, feel free to, to share them with you. This is this is a team goal here. Our ultimate goal is to fill an NFL stadium full of people that are battling this obesity journey. So we want you to be a part of the Tackle Obesity team, whether you're someone who's uh, coaching someone or, or supporting someone to get to across the finish line in their wellness their goals, or you need to struggle yourself, you need help, you have questions, whatever. We're all a team. We're all in this journey together and we are here with our newest teammate coach christian evans coach christian uh we're gonna get right back into this and um this is a a topic that i think is a little sensitive and specifically to you and i because one of the things that we share is that you and i are both african-american males and so i'm just i'm gonna shoot i'm gonna shoot very straight on this there is a very strong stigma amongst the African American community, and even even further beyond that, uh, with African American males about wellness, about fitness, specifically about obesity. Um, and, and here's where I'm going with this: as men, it's very difficult for us to identify when we have a problem until the check engine light comes on, or worse. I myself am guilty of that. I never cared about my weight until I got to the point where I had to go to a doctor. Uh, I played for many years overweight. I, I would get back into shape in training camp. <laughs> I got dropped from being a starter to practice squad and had to work my way back because I showed up out of shape. And there's this stigma amongst men, uh, specifically African-American men, and also with the African-American community that, you know, it's okay to just kind of be big. Like I'm a big guy. That's just who you are. And the, uh, the other thing is that that's a problem is that we actually attack people within our community that are trying to pursue wellness. And the, the most recent example that I can think of is Oprah Winfrey and Oprah's uh, come out and, you know, she stepped down from the board uh, and she's admitted that she's used, uh, you know, injectable um, medications. You know, I, I'm I'm of the mindset that you know there's no one way to fight obesity. We we need to understand what this obesity thing is. It is a very complex ecosystem of very bad things, and there's no one way to address it. Uh, some some of it some of us can work through just simple nutrition changes and exercise. Some of us need uh, additional support like a coach. Uh, most of us do need additional support like a coach. But sometimes that just doesn't work. And sometimes, especially as you age, uh, you have so many different things that goes on in your life or it could be genetics. Uh, we have me modern medical systems or, or technology or uh, in this case, in Oprah's case, you know, we have injectable medications. So what are your what is your overall thoughts? It's sort of a two headed question. 
well, you know, give us your overall perspective on, you know, how do we change the stigma of the obesity, um, addressing the obesity crisis in the African American community because the, the, the statistics are, are disproportionate. It impacts us more than any other community. And then the second thing, the second part of that question is, you know, what are your thoughts on the, the use of injectable medications? I think it needs to start with communication first, because that's how one can establish their why. Again, you know, we've all been guilty. I've been guilty of not really thinking about how to better take care of yourself, right? And the reason why I want to emphasize better because you have to have some type of foundation of that to begin with, right? And there's taking care of yourself, then there's taking better care of yourself. And if there's no communication that you have to do either or, then you won't know you need to until it could possibly be too late. Um, back in, let's say, I think I was maybe like 23, 24, I was admitted into the hospital with high blood pressure. And I didn't know that was, I guess, part of what was going on in my family or members of my family had it, particularly my mom. And I asked her when I was in the hospital bed, I'm like, so you got high blood pressure? So she was like, well, yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, hindsight is 2020. I don't blame her for it. You know, and it don't you don't, but the communication of, hey, maybe these are things that each individual household needs to talk to their household about, first and foremost. You know, taking care of your house. It's, you know, what's going on with you as the head of household, um, the father, the mother, um, whoever it is, and getting that knowledge passed down to your offspring and to your children and letting them know there's a possibility this could happen because it is genetic or can be genetic, but we can fight this, you know, let's try to fight as much as possible through education, through communication. But that just doesn't seem like it takes priority until it's too late. And mm -hmm. I can just really just speak for me in regards to what I personally went through and the reason why, um, let's just say that situation happened is because, you know, I didn't think about it. You know, you don't think mm -hmm. about it. We all go through this phase in life. And, you know, when we're in our, in our teens and our twenties where we feel like we're invincible. Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, like you said, that check engine light come on and it's like, Oh, that's the kryptonite. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And it's like, Oh, so I have kryptonite. Like kryptonite can be that close to me and it can affect me. But you know, when you're younger, you may not even thought that. You know what I mean? And so right. that's where we get to, oh, I can eat a pizza and drink a two liter and go to sleep and and wake up. You know, you try to do that now, you might not wake up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or you're going to be waking up right. super, super stiff or super, super just slow and realizing that we are all mortal. We all have to just do better. And that looks different for each individual. But just with all that just being said, it's our body changes. You know, we evolve. You know, this is the first time in your life you've been your age. This is the first time in my life I've been my age. And it's totally different than when I was 15. But I can remember being 15 just as clear as I can see you on this uh, this live stream. You know what I mean? Um, so, mm -hmm. and you're like, you're trying to figure out how it all connects. You know, but it's like, you know, we, we age. And so therefore it's start doing a little bit more research of how does the body react when you get this age or, you know, what's the benefits of this when you age? My last couple podcasts has been more geared towards the benefits of strength training, strength, uh, strength and training as we age and as we get older mm -hmm. and what we need to sustain the inevitable 1% muscle loss after age of 30 and how to mm -hmm. retain that. And I've been finding more and more interesting studies and put it like that. And it's not a one article fits all. And that's the cure for it. It, it more just opens up more and more um, curiosity for me. You have to be curious too. You know, you have to be a curious person to want to investigate that and learning how to discern and process all this information and who was it applying to? 
too, you know, it's like, okay, who are these studies um, applied to, right? And it's not I, a one one stop fits all because if you're doing your research on a particular community, then that may not reflect our community as Black Americans. There are some things that we are more susceptible to. You know, you can chuck it up to environment. You can chuck it up to slavery. You can chuck it up to those things in our environment from slavery and passed on, so on and so on. These are all possibilities. Nobody's saying they're absolutes, but you have to entertain that possibility and you have to do your research and say, well, where was this research done on this particular mm -hmm. article and how does it apply to me? And just take it into consideration. And I think the thing is, is that once again, we all want so many absolutes that you have to understand there's no absolute, but what information can you take from this? What information can you take from this? There are a lot of things out there that I may not agree with, but what information can I take from this? There was a point in time right. I didn't believe in weight loss surgery because I didn't have weight loss surgery. You understand? Mm -hmm. But as time mm -hmm. went on, I understand somebody else's position. There was right. a point in time to where going to the Ozempic thing to where I didn't understand it. Um, and I wasn't for it. I don't say I'm for it and I don't say I'm against it at this point is that do what you can as long as it's safe as far as for you and you've gotten your medical clearance. You understand Correct. what I'm saying? You've gotten your Get medical clearance. Get the professional clearance. help. Get the right. professional help. Get the professional right. help. Get the professional help. So with that being said, if that's what your doctor recommends to you and you trust them, then go for it. Then go for it. Yes, there are content creators and, um, you know, people making articles about their opinion on it, which is fine. People can have their opinion on it, but you can't take those as Bible. You have to seek your medical professional and, that can be sometimes a scary thing, even in our community, not wanting to go to the doctor. I was, mm -hmm. I was that way. You understand what I'm saying? I'm like, no, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go because deep down you're afraid of what they're going to say. And that could be attributed to, you may not want to be corrected. Right. You have to be open to be corrected. You understand what right. I'm saying? You know, Absolutely. just like, you know, you, you plan and saying, Hey, you know, I'm a, um, I'm going to tackle this person this way. And it's like, well, this is how it's supposed to go. You have to be open to that correction to whatever that game is, that law is. And we have to start being more open to be corrected versus that we're thinking that we're right or thinking that, oh, grandma's remedy was, was right. Some of it probably is, but information can be updated. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the reason why I've come to this type of neutral conclusion is because we really do not know what is in the food that we eat from this, from the, from yes. the actual soil that said grain is planted in to the said grain mm -hmm. that is being planted to mm -hmm. how that is cultivated to how it's processed afterwards. It's like, you don't really have a hand in that. And if you don't, then you have to entertain the possibilities of, they're not playing fair either. So yeah. I guess I'll say, you know, I'm not playing fair either. And so I will take a shot. You know what I mean? Well, I personally ever take o Ozempic. No, because I understand from the little bit of research that I've have read is that it was intended for diabetic patients, just like the keto diet in initially, mm -hmm. but people saw others losing weight from it. And now it's, a craze or the craze. Um, so that's kind of like my opinion on that. I think you touched on the key point is it needs to be under the supervision of a medical professional and a recommendation. Cause you right. do have some people who they just, they, and some of them honestly don't I, don't, I don't ever, I don't ever say someone doesn't need to lose weight. Cause you know what your goals are and what your right. goals are. Right. But there are some people who use it for vanity purposes. Like I'm just going to take Ozempic or whatever my journal, whatever, so I could lose this 20 pounds so I could wear that, that suit for this wedding next month. And then, but that's not what it's designed for. It's designed right. to treat a condition. So right. to your point, it should be under the supervision of a medical professional. Right. Uh, as yeah. it pertains to the African American community, mm -hmm. I'll say this. We got to stop beating each other up about right. weight. And for, uh, there's, so there's the negative side and there's the unintentional um, negativity as well. 
Right. Uh, here's here's what I mean by this. When I when I started going through my journey, when I when I lost, I'd say my first seventy pounds. Mm-hmm. I actually had people reach out to me when they started seeing my pictures. Hey man, are you okay? Are you sick? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 and yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're checking on me, but I'm I'm sick. I'm sick when I'm big. You know, yeah. we have to stop, and we have to stop making fun of people trying to lose weight. I think of you know, celebrity examples like Luther Vandross. We get that man a hard time about yeah. losing weight. Right. We used to always had to make the joke that skinny Luther can't sing. Right. He needs to get, get back right, fat right, again. Right, 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 right. We made fun of the comedian. Uh, is it Bruce Bruce, the one that had the? Mm-hmm. Uh, I forgot. Is it? Yeah, Bruce Bruce. No, uh, Lavelle Crawford. People yeah. people got on his page and made fun of this man. Yeah, because he had he had the, he had the bypass surgery. Okay, but he is like a super morbidly obese guy. Right, and uh, I recall he did an interview when he spoke about how you know frustrating it was to even share the fact that he did the surgery, and he's like, I got a wife and kids, I'm trying to live longer for them. Right. So right. As a community, we have to do better in regard to that stuff. Number one, stop making fun of people, but also understand right. when someone's losing weight, it's not a they're, they're getting healthier. You need to reach out to that person that's 500 pounds and stop feeding them extra food. And give them. I used to get the big yeah. plate because that's a yeah. big man. Yeah. Stop doing that. Because just stop recently, next, don't be an I enabler. Saw, right. I just saw Lizzo said she's quitting the entertainment business or music or right. something like that. She's that gone through a ton of shame. With, and, right. Yeah. Just, just, just with that. And right. you know, a lot of it is it's like, you know, people only see you how they want to see you. And you right. know, you don't you only you can't what they say, you can't get a, a second time making a first impression. So how Correct. people see you is how you people see you. If I've had an experience where, you know, somebody asked if I was sick when I when mm-hmm. I lost weight, I didn't get it until maybe like thirty minutes after the conversation. They saw me in the store. This was like maybe like a month after I hit my goal weight of, you know, two fifteen at that time, going from four oh five. And I've always been a big person. But when I did see that person, it had been like years. You understand what I'm saying? Um mm-hmm. And they said, hey, you okay? And I'm like, yeah, you know, why? She was just like, oh, okay. And it wasn't, and I, I she didn't say anything after or afterwards, but I kept processing. I was walking through the store because I'm in the store, you know, buying my food. And I'm like, oh, she probably think I was sick. And I'm like, why yeah. do we always go there? Why do That's we the always first place we go. go to the negative instantaneously? Um, and... There has been times where people have been sick, just like how they made fun of Chadwick Bozeman. And he was yeah. sick. You know, he was right. he was he was sick. And when people don't know, they'll say anything. And Correct. that can be scary too. And so Correct. as adults, I've as I've gotten older, I've learned to not respond to everything. You Correct. know what I mean? It can have, you, know? you can have an unintended or an intentional mental effect on that person, and you could possibly steer someone in in the wrong direction just because of those, those yeah of yeah 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 it's not oh. as encouraging as you think you know it mm-hmm. would be or should be right everybody is not happy and may not be happy and here's the thing i will say this from learning is that they just don't know so because you've lost your weight i've lost my weight and at the time when you're going through it you're like okay everybody should be happy for me because i'm happy for myself mm-hmm. for for doing this but Mm -hmm. everybody doesn't share that same thing and you have to be okay with that you know you 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 just have to be okay with that it's kind of challenging and it's tough and how we respond can be like oh this is a diss or it's a shade and it's more it's more laughable now i've gotten older because when somebody is not in the know they just don't know so they will say anything and that anything is wrong and it can be wrong you know and you know, people may feel a certain way, but facts will cancel all of those feelings instantaneously. Absolutely. Facts you know, over I'm, feelings. Coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was, just, mm-hmm. I was talking to my friend last night about that. And it's like somebody can say one thing because that's how they feel. But if I have a piece of paper that's legally documented, you know, saying this is exactly what it is, then do your feelings still stand or do they do they do you stand corrected? Are you willing to accept that correction? You know what I mean? Are Absolutely. you willing to accept, hey, 
you know what? I was wrong about that. I see the point in that. You understand what I'm saying? So just with all that being said, nobody's going to be more happier for you than you at doing what's best for you. And you have to learn how to be cool with that and settle right. and, and settle with that. It's challenging. I'm not saying it is easy. It's challenging, you know, but you have to really just be happy with what you're doing. And we all want a community of people rooting us on. There's no problem with that. There's no problem right. with that. But, it's, you know, this and isolation. Speaking of rooting on, I mm-hmm. want to give a quick shout out to Soul Food Nutrition and Wellness. Thank you so much for the support. They gave us a little, little, little love right there. Yeah, that's, my home girl, that. that's my homegirl, Michelle. That's my homegirl, Michelle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank, yeah, yeah, thank yeah. you, Michelle. Thank you for yeah. the support. We appreciate that. We had a question mm-hmm. from Best Kept. And uh, we, we doubt, we're, we're in our two-minute drill here. Uh, so Best Kept uh, says, inevitable 1% muscle loss after 30 is a real thing. Uh, I can tell you without, without question, absolutely. As we get older, we lose muscle mass. That's right. why exercise is important. That's why right. proper nutrition becomes even right. more critical as we age. Our metabolism slows down. Right. There are charts and graphs and things uh, that we'll, we, we can put on the website. Uh, we've had this dialogue. I can't recall exactly who, which one of our, our coaches did that, but I'll be, I'll put that, uh, I'll, I'll ask the team to put that chart back up on the uh, Tackle of BC website. So uh, check it out. We'll, we'll try to get it up for you, like either Monday or Tuesday, but there's a graph that shows the inverse relationship between age and percent body fat and muscle mass. And it, yeah. it, it it's on a downward slope. As yeah. you age, you yeah. get more body fat, you get lower muscle naturally. And yeah. so that's and why that it's was, important for us not to contribute to that to that decline. And that was one of the articles and podcasts that I was reading off and looking over um, about, you know, aging. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Because, you know, 40 and it's like, OK, why does my body feel like this? Why does my body feel like that? And so you come across right. these articles and it's like, OK, you know, that was really telling about, you know, um, the one percent, the inevitable one percent body loss or muscle mass, let me correct, muscle mass loss as we get older, right? And the things that yeah. you can do to slow that down, and those are two two things, strength training and how you recover and how you, let's say, how you how you refuel those muscles that you tore, mm-hmm. tore down and broke down is protein, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And that's a touchy subject for a lot of people who – don't want to read about protein and what is protein and the best sources of protein. And that gets really um, polarizing where it's plant-based or animal-based and the evidence is right. That's an entire show coach. That's That's how, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, right. But I'm just saying for, for, from, from that, it's like, that's where you have to constantly keep reading at, you know, have to constantly keep doing your research at and the workouts that you do do from strength training, it's how do you recover from that? And you have to, now it's working out is no longer cute anymore after mm-hmm. 30. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, you got to do it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or else your quality of life towards the end of life is going to really suffer. So it's all an right. investment at this point right now. So going back to what you were talking about, about the black community and working out and weight loss and things like that and it's no longer cute for us no more to be the size or whatever and it's like you just have to move at this point you have Mm -hmm. to pick up a dumbbell and you have to move and you have to seek out help because if you never picked up a dumbbell and you're 35 37 years old nobody's going to you know criticize you for it you know the thing is is that go seek out help first because those right. things have to be structured because you could say, hey, you know what? I'm 37, I'm 38. It's time for me to start working out. And it may feel cute because you've seen somebody on IG or YouTube do it. And then after a week, you're like, I don't want to do it anymore. Why? Because you don't, you haven't established your why. And if you don't know what you're doing and you fail to admit that you don't know what you're doing, you're not going to continue to do it. So therefore, see You need help. the information and yes. the accountability. And invest That's in why yourself. having Yes. Absolutely. Yes. You think about and it, it's that's one of the things I'm glad you mentioned it. I'm gonna go there real quick. I know we're in overtime for our folks that are alive. I'm glad y'all are still on. Uh let's let, let you know it is we, it. We, 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 this is great this is great dialogue. But people always use the objective that it costs too much money. Well, yeah. so does medication later on yeah. in life. 
So does yeah. higher life insurance premiums. Yeah. Yeah. So, so does so does not getting a career choice because to be honest, yes. there is a significant amount of discrimination against larger people. Yes. Uh, uh, so there there's a there are tons of studies that show that people that are obese earn less than their peers that are in their mm-hmm. peak physical condition. Yeah. There's that. There's that stigma. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. the medical gun. And then, uh, you know, some companies discriminate because they think, well, you're obese, you're probably going to cost us more. Yeah. yeah. More yeah. days of work. You're going to be yeah. sick. Our yeah. costs go up. And yeah. in some cases, if you're really large, you know, we have to make accommodations for you, et cetera. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I've literally even witnessed um, cases like this where, you know, people either weren't promoted or weren't given opportunities because of that, these type of things. So when you think about the cost, think about yeah. the long term costs. Yeah. And most of this stuff, honestly, if you break it down to a daily basis, you're spending this anyway, because yeah. a fast food combo now is 20 bucks. Yes. You yes. know, 20, 20 bucks a day yes. times yes. the number of times you go to McDonald's or yeah. whatever restaurant, that yeah. adds up very quickly. So, right. like you said, right. it's, an, it's an investment in yourself. But when you right. find out the reason why, it makes it easier for you to understand why you make that investment in yourself. Yeah, because so, initially people can look at it as, as pricey. And let's just roll with it. Mm-hmm. Let's roll with it and say yes. So... You also have to break it down to what is this costing per day, right? You just said, okay, average, let's say meal. And you know, let's just say we eat on the average maybe three to six times per day, right? But you're just talking about Mm -hmm. one meal at, let's just say, $20. And so let's say you find a personal trainer like me. And that personal trainer offers a, let's just come in for one day. Come in east one day. One per week. Let's say that session is valid. Mm-hmm. One session. You understand what I'm saying? So what is that from that $20 McDonald's meal that you've only eaten once? Who says you're not going to eat it twice? Who says you're not going mm-hmm. to go back on the third time, right? So 20 times mm-hmm. three is what? That's 60, right? So you take five days a week, 60 times five, you spent $300. Now, mm-hmm. if I'm charging $40 per one session, out of that one meal... <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? That's only eight dollars. That's eight dollars. So if you take eight times five, that's forty dollars. So going back to your point is that it's going to be more expensive to continue to keep eating that versus okay, investing in yourself and finding somebody that you can probably cut a deal with and say, if I can get at least one session per week and I can work out and I can learn um, a little bit more about how to better take care of myself and I can do that for an entire month. Four, 40 times what say four that's 160 okay <laughs> you you spent you spent half of what you would have spent at mcdonald's eating like that for an entire week so what happens is i said i said all that to say is that people fail to break things down from a mathematical standpoint of what is this going to cost me per day they can do it for any other thing right if you wanted to go to uh beyond oh they'll do it for vacations they're why they have a why right. Why do right. I, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I'm going to save up this money because, you know what I'm saying, I'm going to Turks and Caicos or I'm going to Los Angeles. I'm going wherever. And that's fine. You can do that. Right. You can also do that same mathematical computation and break down for an investment of yourself. Now, I'll add this also, uh, Coach Christian. Reward yourself with that same money because this yeah. is something that that, that I, I do. Uh, when I complete a week where I'm on track, Mm-hmm. I take the money that I was normally BSing on garbage food. Yeah, and I put it. I, ha- I have a Chris- I have a Christmas Club account. That's okay. an adjunct to my to my checking account. Right. And most of your, your financial institutions have something like that. I put that money in my account every week, every week, whether it's thirty, forty bucks, or whatever. And my goal is to get a Harley. Yeah. So over the course of a year. I have enough money to put a down payment on my Harley. So I, so I went right. and got my, my M endorsement. I learned how yeah. to ride. Yeah. And that's, yeah. so I'm going to reward myself instead of eating the crap. I'm going to get a Harley and my wife and I are going to get on, get on and we're going to, you know, right. we're going to do some riding. Right. So right. Right. these are, these are ways that you can, you can, you know, kind of keep yourself motivated and, and stay on the, stay on the on track. In addition to so, that, you know, by doing that, it's going to take time to reach your goal. And that's another yeah. thing about 
I would just say any community or any individual person is that we want everything right now because we live in this instantaneous society to where at the flick of my thumb, I can Mm -hmm. get this, I can order tickets, I can, you know, I can purchase my bike from Amazon or something. I can get it right, 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 right now. And they think that's how everything in life is going to be. It's like, no, it's going to take time. You know, when you are Mm -hmm. working out or in your fitness journey to reach your goal, it's you have to give yourself time. Your timing is your timing. It's not the next person in front of you, behind you, on the side of you. You know, who knows what that other person is doing. I tell people that constantly when it's physique looking, you know, as far as from the standpoint of somebody's looking at somebody's physique, I'm like, you don't know what they're on. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Like, okay, Ozempic. You don't know if somebody's taking Ozempic. Right. You don't know if somebody's snorting cocaine. You don't know. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? You really don't know. And so right. it's it's the fact that you have to just really concentrate on you and do the best job that you can. And it's give yourself time, give yourself grace. Once you allow yourself to do that, then everything will fall into place. Well, I mean, we could we could go on and on and on. This, yeah, this yeah, has been yeah, an hour, yeah, but yeah, it, seemed yeah. like, it seemed like it seemed like five minutes. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure, for sure. You provide so much value and information, uh, Coach Christian. It, it, we this is not the end. Like I said, you know, we, no, we're no, no. we're the beginning right here. We do teammates. This we yeah, we do teammates, yeah. right? We have that's another right. another coach on our staff. Uh, how do they reach you? How can they how can they find you on social media? How can they reach out to you? Um, you can just go. I'm gonna do this very simple. Just go to my blog site, ChristiansWeightSuccess.net, and all of my socials, how to connect with me on there, will be there from IG to Facebook to YouTube to the podcast. Everything is right there. I want to keep it simple. Keep it simple. ChristiansWeightSuccess.net. You go there and you can connect with me through all socials or right through there. You can sign up for my weekly newsletter and it everything is right there. Plain and simple, nice and clean. Outstanding, Coach Christian. It is an honor and a pleasure to have you on this team. We are so excited. This is just the beginning, my brother. We got a, we got it. a big battle, and we got yes, one head yes, coach on the squad. Yes, with us. And I appreciate this. Um, this is this is great. This is great. This is great. A- a- absolutely, and and you guys continue to follow the website because you're going to see Coach Christian's page go up soon on the Tackle Obesity website. Uh, we'll have links in there. So if you can't remember anything else, go to tackleabesity.com. You'll see the links on there for Coach Christian. Uh, if not him, anybody. Uh, all of our yeah. members on our team have yeah. some type yeah. of specialty. They have some role that they play in this battle against obesity. Yeah, and we want sure. you to play your role in this battle against obesity. For Join sure. the team. Go to us, tackleobesity.com. Sign up. Subscribe to our newsletter if you are – a coach or trainer, whatever you want to be a part of this, reach out to us. We would love to have you on here as well. Uh, But until then, have a happy and healthy week, and we will see you next time.